Hey guys, Luke is on. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Hey, Luke, can you hear us? Hey, yeah, I have a major, major echo on that. That's probably because I forgot the real microphone today, so we're using a laptop mic with speakers. <laughs> Since I can't share this to both the screen to Eric, to Luke and everybody else, I'm just going to put it right here and maybe raise this up a little bit. And then I'll use a finger while I'm doing it. So this is Purism. The site, the URL is uh, P-U-R-I-S-M. And one of the questions that I've always had about buying a new laptop has always been the control of not just the OS, because I know I can get decent open source, you know, lots of eyes on the code. But it's the firmware question that I've always had, a, had an issue with, right? Whether it's backdoors that could be built into it or other things like that, right? So Purism has these products. One of them is this phone, and I hope it doesn't auto play. But they have the Librem 5 USA and the Librem 5 phone. And they control the firmware. They write their own firmware. It's a, I don't know what country they're out of. I think it's the U.S. But this is one of two uh, manufacturers that I've come across recently where they do that. They control everything from the BIOS firmware all the way up the stack. And I think and I'm, I'm just going to scroll real quick. But they also have this USB key for a security token. So you can store all your encryption keys. It's similar to like the cat card scenario that you have with the DoD. Um, <clears throat> but I, what drew me to this phone was I had been looking at buying a black phone. I don't know if you remember this from a few years ago, um, but it's a not, it's kind of like a vendor neutral type device that has a little bit more control over the entire device. Well, it kind of went belly up, kind of like Blackberry did, but this may be a decent replacement. So if you're interested in maybe a full open source hardware solution all the way up to the software stack, this may be a good option for you. And as far as geek toys go, I kind of love that, yeah. right? Um, their laptops actually aren't horrible either. Um, and recently I've been fishing around for a laptop. Uh, they've got a 13 inch model and a 15 inch model and the specs are pretty decent actually. The uh, second, is uh, System76. Yeah, okay, I'm looking at that. Their prices are a little bit better, aren't they? Their prices are a little bit better. They, uh, <clears throat> wow, they still have the uh, the old holiday sale going on, on. I think they forked Ubuntu to get right. the Pop OS. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Okay. I did come across something, like they do have like the one that's on the bottom screen, that Adder WS has that RTX 2070 built into it. I don't know if it like sounds like a jet engine while you're using it, but... Uh, with a 4K OLED display, okay. which would be really nice. Um, the other the other thing that really kind of drew me to these, again, the firmware is open source, so you can review and eat it if you'd like. Uh, but the other item, and I'm going to oh, I did come across, I think, I think it was their Twitter post, that they have their R&D teams currently working on a, a brand spanking new laptop design to go along with their uh, Felio, Felio, I keep wanting to say, but check this out. It looks like a speaker, like oh, an old school nice. speaker, right? <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I mean, that's stylish. That's yeah. So they're coming up with a laptop that looks very similar to it. I really appreciate this build layout. To Where's show the floppy you. drive? <laughs> <laughs> so this is clearly a cracking rig because you have the number of GPUs that yeah. you do in there, right? <laughs> they have dual CPUs on there. They do, and a decent number of memory banks. So, and honestly, for twenty six hundred bucks. I've seen worse things. So the one on the far right is dual Xeon CPUs. They're it's ECC, it's ECC memory up to 768 gigs. Um, Do they have anything with uh, Ryzen flavor? Yeah, there's a Threadripper there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, that middle one, that box is That one's yeah, Threadripper or Core X, yeah. Oh, okay. And then down here you've got Ryzen or Core, so it looks like they'll... It's memory, right? It's not bad. No, for two thousand or twenty one hundred. Yeah, it's coming out of that wire. It's pretty, uh, pretty good. It, yeah, it looks good too. I really like the the, uh, the speaker look. So that's what I've stared out recently. The last item 
that was on my wish list. The last component that I had to change up from my old nine-year-old computer build to the new computer that I have. And I say new, and I'm not going to air quote it because I've done that already too many times tonight. I'm feeling <laughs> comfortable with myself. Was it or not? So, um, was the, uh, it's the uh, Sabrent one terabyte uh, Gen 4. And I don't even know where the Sabrent rocket, I think. This mm -hmm. is probably going to be it. But it went on sale back on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I think I picked it up for about 150 But right now it's sitting at 170 wow. This, When you go to like the different benchmark sites that shows the speed performance, unless you go Optane, this is the highest mm -hmm. tier you can get. I think on the reads, I mean, it's wrong, <coughs> but I think on reads or writes, it's in the 3600 range, oh, nice. which is ridiculous. Um, so and it was crazy. Is I mean, it's the size of a gum stick, man. Yeah. It's just so tiny. I was looking at building a desktop, watching the Black Friday deals. Yeah. And all, I was going to go A and B for the first time because it's been a long time since I've had A and B. It's been a long time since they were with, had something for you to go. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, but the boards that I was looking at were all PCI Gen 4 boards on purpose. <laughs> That's awesome. <coughs> Yeah, it advertises 5,400. How much is the two? Uh, Three something, maybe. That one's sold out. No, 340, which isn't horrible. Not too bad, then. What size is this? This is New Egg. Yeah. I got, I, I, I upgraded the, in my MacBook Air about six months ago, and I think it was OCW that I bought a terabyte SSD. Or OCX. Some OWC. OWC, yeah. yeah. Okay. It was like two sixty five for a one terabyte SSD. Okay. And prices it, it works for three ninety nine a year. Fantastic. Like it's almost worth buying the NVMe yeah. instead of I bought a one terabyte NVMe last year and it was three ninety nine. Yeah. I wish I had uh, the link something I read about the other day. You guys would <coughs> like it. it was a guy who had built a um, I think he had a dozen Raspberry Pis what? in a rack that he was using as like a hacking kind of workstation and uh, it was really cool the way he had this set up. He had a Nook underneath it was running like that was the only Windows software on the whole thing. I wish the Nook prices weren't where they are. Oh, oh, man. Nook, they were awesome. cheaper. I love them though. They were cheaper. I want like five of them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's those Raspberry Pis lined up, and he was running, you know, uh, and they've got four gig. Uh, some of them are running; uh, uh, they got four gig RAM on them, and he had uh, oh, yeah. two or three that were set up as the stuff that he would use for, you know, uh, like a sandbox environment or yeah. reverse engineering things. And, I don't well. get into a point if anyone has any recommendations. Like I have an awesome storage at home. Like, I got a NAS <coughs> I can do mm -hmm. performance built in. But I want to do more compute, so I need to get a dedicated like, compute part. The cost is actually like enough to probably do it, but I want a little bit more scalable. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to check out like the, the System76 and what was the other one that you had listed? Purism. 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 Okay. And check out both of those and see do they fit the bill, do they fit the budget. Can always do like the, I don't want like a, a jet engine, <coughs> and I don't yeah. want a major like a, uh, Furnace because I have enough electronics that generate heat and the 3D printer that generates heat. And it's great during the winter, it sucks during the summer. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, I got one of those new things. It's not that my next thought on it, just uh, uh, to keep my back in some yeah. mm -hmm. I used to use Dropbox, but uh, I figured if I was milk in a year, it's added, it's I'm broken even. And then after that, you know, I got something I control better. So, did you patch your next cloud rate for mine? You, they didn't apply to me because it's only the index, and I'm running it through Apache. Um, so it didn't. Um, and I have great email and everything says so upgrade. So I just I don't use it. But I was you seen this one? It's uh, I've looked at it. On Logic. Really. I saw the yeah, uh, for the hardware. I mean, the only thing that's nice about it is the main competitor. I just saw it the other day. Uh, on Logic. Oh, on Logic. Yeah. I've checked them out. I'm not sure if that's okay. the manufacturer or the, uh, yeah, right. the distributor. Mm -hmm. Logic supplies. Uh, well. I mean, yeah. The only point Fan I had was uh, I think I came across them the other day when I picked something up. There you go. Once it's a real industrial look, too. What was the point I was going to get from? Yeah. That's a good thing. I don't know what you can do. I use both. You expose them externally. 
Yeah. Do you run it through like a player? Uh, no. uh, that's, for you. that's the one recommendation I would have. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you're running like a firewall um, where you can kind of control who was created, yeah. pull yeah. cloud players IP address list, mm -hmm. lock down your firewall so only cloud players can talk to in there, mm -hmm. and now everyone else is going to be and, uh, yeah. like you're not going to scan and see your public IP address and know that you're right on one side. Oh, damn. Yeah. They're going to see There's an IP address on cloud players that more active. has yeah. next file. Yeah, I'm just I, I was actually debating whether yeah. I wanted to do it publicly or not. I initially did just because I wanted to see how I used it. But then now um, my, uh, it's, I, I'm actually thinking about just taking it off the public internet and just running my house. Oh, do joint channel. It's it's probably probably because oh, for yeah. the most part, because uh, I, I use the contacts, yeah. uh, you know, take them on my phone calendar. Because I'm at home most of the time. So, and even if you couldn't get in touch with it when I'm out, that's fine. It's not like, yeah, it's not like data's going to suddenly show up. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, like learning yeah. to learn to cloud player with free to learn. Just to learn. Just to learn. Uh, one, I mean, you just got to accept, like, hey, my traffic's passing through them. I got to trust mm -hmm. them. Yeah. As long as you have that level of you're okay with. A lot of good. Um, they do well, apply some security on your, on your on like, yeah. all the traffic. They do caching for you automatically. And yeah. Uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a chat about stuff, you know. I guess, I guess I sort of like the idea of it being its own kind of thing. And so, uh, well, listen, if you're still using the next file, yeah, yeah. you're just passing them down as like a proxy. Yeah, yeah. And that way, and you still have full control over like your DNS. So if there's something like I VPN to my home, I don't want that to like, result in cloud player. Yeah. Um, well, right now, that's the only thing that for, uh, 443 is the only thing that's exposed. I don't have any kind of VPN or anything. So. On the gift, the geek gift, um, I know Hack5 always makes toys. Their latest one is one that piqued my interest. Yes. Which is the, sure. and that's only because whenever I see a, a poor project which is kind of hanging out, especially in like the business space, and I've done this for my own companies, you know, you, you plug in and you're like, am I going to get an address? You know, it's like <laughs> we're playing a little bit. So that to have a little toy you can have on your keychain or in your pocket that you can just plug into anywhere. I haven't checked out like the details of it. Like in my mind, I want to be able to like plug in ten different ports and have ten different inmaps. You know what I mean? And be able to see which ones, you know, came back hot. Um, but I think that's cool, just for that walk by reconnaissance. Like, hey, I'm in a Starbucks, and it just happened to be an Ethernet jack right here. Or, <laughs> Let's see what's on the line. That's why I got, I got a rubber ducky from High Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I got a few of those. I got the rubber ducky. The, Pineapple, you got the one. pineapple. They end up being toys that just sit in the closet, and I never really use them to a whole lot of effect. But that's one of those ones where I have enough curiosity that it'd be easy enough to like. <laughs> it's a fire and forget, like plug it in, you wait 15 seconds, you unplug it, and then at my schedule, I can kind of go back and be like, I just want to see what this is. Mm -hmm. so, to me, that seems cool. That's what I want to do at work with Rubber Ducky. Then want to launch them, okay? Rubber Ducky is great <laughs> from the blue teamer side. Mm -hmm. Uh, for presentations to be able to showcase to like your management above and be like, this is the type of threat. Like you say that this doesn't exist, and I'm here to show you that this type of thing does. Just make sure you have a payload payload that works in your environment. You know, skirts around the tools that you have in place to be able to say, hey, I'm going to plug this in, and it's not going to destroy nothing, but it's going to show you that I got control and you don't, and then I can walk away. So, and I've used that to many times. Oh. Same thing with that phone pie. Yeah, that's just a rubber ducky with more compute. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I was. Didn't they also release one recently that was a HDMI? Yeah, the that? screen cap thing. Like you I put said, it in line, or you just throw it in. A, you got one? Oh, there you go, screen crab. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You want to use it now? You want to give it a shot? I've never used it. It's on my rubber ducky right. case, but in a blue yeah, one. Oh, before you got it, so I said I got a rubber ducky yeah. and an Uber tooth. Oh, nice. Never used either one. A screen crab. It's just so left on my desk. It's just going to cool. record. So, yeah. It's just 200. I have a, but it's oh, just, 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 just 200. Like, the ducky script's easy. It, it, it has yeah, it's going to your screen or your projector. Yeah, yeah the Uber tooth. Back to you. I, yeah. I'm still trying yeah. to download and get it to work. I don't know. Gotcha. You can put in an SD card and have it right to the SD card, or you can have it connect back to the Hack 5 C2 instance. And that's oh, wow. a really you, nice. <laughs> yeah, I think it gives you five. You can have five for free. Five instances. There are five devices. But yeah, I got one of that Augusta. 
Hmm. And I was going, going for the, um, the other one. No. Um, pineapple. 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 I was hoping for the pineapple. I didn't realize that they were giving those out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I walked into my work and I sat that on my uh, big boss's desk. Oh, he goes, what's that? And I was like, that'll let me record everything that's on your computer. He goes, get out of here. <laughs> 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 so that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. He's like, no, really. He's like, no, really. Get out of here. It's not totally covert, though. I mean, right. It's, it's pretty obvious. Well, yeah. If you put it behind the TV, you're good. Yeah. 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 Or you put a piece of tape on it that says oh. IT, do not remove. <laughs> 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 not exactly. No one will touch it. Yeah. That'd be easy to put it in the desk room. Yeah. And you just put some Velcro on the Velcro, yeah. To me, that's, that's easier to hide than a pineapple. Yeah. 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 With all the gangly antennas yeah. that are coming out of it. And you have a lot of people already have HDMI running underneath their desk, you know, from a dock over yeah. here or something. No one's going to question, like, video. No one's going to question, like, no no. Gonna question, like when they see a video right. cable plugged into something. It's Why would video. Um, Anybody was in the military? Yeah. Uh, Palo Alto is giving free training and certification for veterans. Oh, really? That's um, crazy. You got to take free courses. So uh, intro to cybersecurity, which was a laugh. It was it was hilarious last night. Um, then Palo Alto is handle S eight, and then you can get the cert. You can get certified with it, and then there's another one you can get certified. Right. So you can leave with two or three certs. I think four nights do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Free training for veterans. So on the, the geek front, I was going to show this. I just remember I got it. This was new to my bag. Ooh, wow. it be, it's nothing but straps. So you put things in there wherever you want. And pretty awesome. There you go. Oh, I like yeah. the fact that you've got the comb. Yeah, comb. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Throw my chapstick right there with it. <laughs> but I can feel like it. Right. Right. Yeah. Break in, you got to look good. Yeah, that's right. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. You got a little patch cable, yeah. you know, the battery. It's funny because when you when, when uh, I came last time, I had one of those boards and I was getting tired of it. Yeah. And I ended up going to the bag because I saw you had a bag like this, and I was like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> now he's got to he's got to buy another like, bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I still use the little bag. <laughs> I love having the bag. Yeah. Like the, like it's essentially a box within boxes within boxes. And I love it. <laughs> All the way. Now, but those, that is a handy thing to have. Right? I went with that because I'm the briefcase right. with this. And I'm like, well, how am I going to organize all my crap in a freaking briefcase without just throwing it in there? Yeah. yeah. That's like, no, that's a cool idea. That's why I still have a loop to briefcase and still need a backpack. You know? I got a new uh, backpack. I didn't bring it today, but I saw Luke have one of those kick ass uh, Swiss Army backpacks. Yeah. And so I, I got one. And man, that thing is great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I like it because I'm going to skip some pockets for me. Uh, I can never find my. I got it. I got stuck right in my pocket. I got everything in the bag like this. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Zip from here. Nice and nice. Nice. This one will have, it's tear proof. This has uh, the extra batteries, all the USB flashes in here. That's when you have to airdrop this, in. Right? This is live. Yeah, I have live um, malware. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Powered OS, Poly, all these flash drives. <laughs> I already said I have Raspberry Pi in here. So everything's Those are separate. Raspberry Pi. You guys keep talking about it. Yeah. So like an Arduino. It's a little. Uh, um, it's a box ship big. Ship on a circuit board. It has an HDMI port, and it has a mic and uh, webcam ability. And it has its own OS on it. It's a mini computer, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That big. Can you just build it? It's it's run well, done. You, gotta, you yeah, get out the box and plug it in. Yeah, it's like what, 30, 30, 35, bucks. 35 bucks or something. Huh. And it's a little bit the Raspberry Pi like three. They have like a four. Yeah, uh, yeah the four is pretty four, four yeah. Gig is, uh, like eighty bucks. <coughs> the three has the. What is it? Like the five dollar one too. That's like, uh, I've seen on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's ten dollars now for yeah. the W. Yeah, it's probably yeah. wireless. Yeah, yeah, I got the W one. Mine's yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. USB probably yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Mine's Wi Fi huh. and uh, now they're, they're ARM processors, so they're not very powerful. Uh, yeah. But they fit the new quite a bit. I've been writing a lot of ARM lately. Yeah. I think I'm going to get, get one so I can. But the, the big thing, if you're looking at Pi 3 and 4, with 4, they finally separated the, the bus or the Ethernet controller and the USB. So you can actually get gigabit speeds mm -hmm. on There's the that. Ethernet. That's enough for that. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Go ahead. 
as separate from your USB. So, so that's the overture too. Before, if you get a three or older, oh, yeah, okay. like say you put it on the network and you want to access it and you put anything on USB now and they're simultaneously Plug communicating, in. you're automatically just splitting that time. communication. Like the oh, it's kind of like a pineapple. It's going to be that much slower. So if you put a USB disk into a Raspberry Pi to give it additional storage so really and access it over to like SMB, <laughs> it's going to be cheap. It's going to cost you like 50 cents a month to power it, but yeah. it's going to be slow. USB or the Pi 4, maybe it'll cost a dollar an hour a month to run, but the speeds are going to be a lot faster. It does. I've heard of it. I just don't know what it was. I think that they went with the mini instead of keeping the full. Like, I would have preferred. Give me a display port. Yeah. Give me a display port 1.2 so I can. USB C. USB C. Allow me to chain my monitors because the tech supports it. Instead of giving me two smaller HDMI ports, and the cables are always wonky. That's yep. the only reason I. Have. <laughs> so, did anyone have any projects or anything that they kind of I think we went through the, the toys and the, the holiday gifts? I don't know if anyone has any new holiday gifts to kind of bring up or discuss, but I know we wanted to have part of the segment. meeting here huh? as well for projects and anything cool. I know we talked about the the net king of the hill. That's going to be private talks from here on out. Yeah, which brings up an interesting point. Probably going forward at some point, we may do the beginning of the meeting doing something like we did now. And then because some folks will be working on more of that secretive aspect of the CTF, we may have to break off and they'll maybe go over to the main project area here at Synergy Mill um, to work on that just so they can talk a bit more freely without giving away the keys to the castle. Um, and it's a, like anyone here wants to partake in the CTF. That's the whole reason. That yeah. That's, like we don't want to exclude anyone. Like if you don't want to contribute, that's no problem. But maybe you want to, like, you'll be at B side and you just want to hop in and start hacking away for fun. We want you to. We want you to. Yep. So, for a complete noob, where do I start to learning on, like, how to capture fires or how to start Wi Fi? So, there's one, all kinds of websites, but YouTube's going to be your best friend. Um, and I would say check out Hack the Box and check out this guy's name, and I'll put it, I'll give you the info. It's a Slack, but his name's Ipset. Yeah, I'm pulling him up right yeah. here. Yeah, and he just, he's very methodical. He's, I don't know if he does any new videos anymore. I think he got <laughs> there. Yeah, well. he, he, he came like rocks. Yeah, five he's days ago. There's a Pico <laughs> CTO. That's, yeah, that's, that's a good CTO. one. Uh, yeah. Over the wire is good. So if, if you'd like, um, so Hack the Box is free and open source in the sense of you can just, you have to hack your way through to get, to get in, in get into it. And it's it. not is it's not a walk in the park. It is a yeah. walk in the park. It will be your first challenge, but it is a lot of fun, right? Once you get it. This guy Ipsec, his videos range from like anywhere from like fifteen minutes all the way up to like a couple hours sometimes, depending upon how long it takes him to go through them. But he does a complete walkthrough, and the way they do it is Hack the Box has these vulnerable machines, and you can't talk about them while they're active. But once they retire, like within a couple hours, he's got his video out showing you how he crushed it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that and there's tons of other people doing the same thing, and a lot of them are writing blogs and everything else. And the reality aspect is those people wanting pen touch jobs. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they write the blog as a means of showing off their documentation, the thoroughness of their uh, their methodology. Mm -hmm. a buddy of mine in Sweden works for the Swedish government now, yeah. and that's what he did. Not hack the box, but blog everything he did and just show his creativity. So. And this is another one if you want to run them local on your machine. It's Bone Hub. We've, we've had a couple meetings here where we'll drop a few of those down and everybody will put them in their VM. They'll load up, you know, in, you know VMware or whatever you want to have, and then you can attack your own, your own vulnerable system here. And there's systems out there like the damn vulnerable yeah. web app. Web app, you know, and it has every exploit possible. Like you can start off simple and then work your way to advance, you know, like there's more than one way into the box. Mm -hmm. So pick up the easy ones, once you're in, start picking up the next ways. And it's um, built so, truly like a nice CTF. So if you look at it, like with the wider attack framework help at all? On the blue team side. Not, so, team not, not really. really. I will I'm say one of the things I've been thinking about a lot lately is maybe using it in your report writing to maybe make a better connection yes. with your blue oh, team yeah, on the other yeah. side. I think that would be a line really miter, always on the consulting side, gauge if they're in the miter, if they even know what miter is. If they know what miter is, or at least the security team is aligning to it, it's going to be great. I do the same thing on the sim side. With my yeah. Work. yeah. One thing that I'm doing, uh, just to 
came out later, you know, is uh, I think it's from Georgia Wine and yeah. penetration uh, testing book. Um, the blue book. The blue book. Um, it's a little old, but it still applies. Um, I can share that in, uh, resource with you. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you set up like XPVMs and mm -hmm. uh, Ubuntu 8. Like, Hacker Playbook. Uh, Hacker Playbook is this one. Book yeah. is I the, have that book. This is the yeah. best preparation for the OSCP exam. Oh, yeah. It's really Le good. So the OSCP exam is the end of the PWK course. <clears throat> Which is a PDF and video series, uh, pen testing with Kali Linux. I'm on PDF. Okay, <laughs> so this is a great precursor to that. If you go through this book, you'll be ready for starting on Hack the Box, Bone Hubs, and it's easy know. to read. It is very easy to read. In fact, I saw an interview with her, and she she made the comment, "I wanted to write a book that I needed when I first started this, something that would get me through that first year." And launch me out the door. That, yeah, that's a great. Actually, that's a great Christmas gift idea. To all your nieces and nephews. <laughs> and then you can branch off and get the Metasploit book. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm always reading, practicing, doing all this stuff. And my my son is 13. He's reading my A plus book, and he's like, I want to hack it. Yes. And he's 13, and I was like, Okay. <laughs> the time you get college, man. <laughs> Well, that's the. Well, he loves Mr. Robot. That's why he loves Mr. Robot. Okay. He is a big fan of Mr. Robot. Finale is coming this. I know. Get him a Raspberry Pi. Have you done already? Yeah. Raspberry 3. All right, good. Yeah. So, I do have a question since we talk, since we talk about Minor Attack. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on Minor Attack? Like, is it a good framework? Is it missing stuff? Is it missing stuff? Probably. Yeah, yeah I don't it's think everything's thorough, complete. Though, everything's I don't miss something. They do add to it, which I appreciate. My gripe with it is, it is broad and yes. deep, and it is difficult to often navigate that quickly. No, but from agree. my perspective. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And my my leadership or anybody else when they look at it, dude, that it it just looks like a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, and it's it's, it's, it's way, way over. Yeah. Way over. Yeah, absolutely. So the audience has to be at a more boots on the ground kind of level. Right. What I like about it is. It's fundamental, like objective is to be based off of real world observations, not based off of theorem, theory. Right. Which I greatly appreciate. Right. Yeah. yeah. This is what we're seeing. This is what's happening. And they do A level attribution to be able to say, like, hey, here are some groups that we see are using this technique or that's executable. Like, they do have some details in there. It's just a matter of finding them. And it's not like that's my second biggest gripe with them. They don't have any good searching. To find things mm -hmm. on their, like the data they collect or that they have available, it's there. It's just a matter yeah. of finding it. The way that, the, yeah, so my big, my big question is, yeah, how they organize the data. Like, okay, I got, I got the uh, tactics, right? Mm -hmm. Mitigations. Um, they're missing. Like, there's mitigation, but there's actually more listed within the tactics than there is in the mitigations tab. Mm -hmm. And then data sources as well. That's not, yeah, there. that's that's within each tactic itself. Yeah. Well, and I think that alignment is the the fledgling piece that they're maybe evolving to. Oh. Yeah. And but I'm just curious, like, what everyone else thinks about minor attack is, like, I'm, I'm super into it, and I'm working on something on the side with it, and I'm really enjoying it, but I want to know what the thoughts were. No. Because I might be an echo chamber. No, 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 you're not. <laughs> In fact, I think it would be decent if you came and shared something about it here. I think sure. that would be... We don't... Uh, we'll follow NIST, and... We talk about you know the kill chain and uh, well, my boss is a VP, so he's high level. We talk about that, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll follow that one. He's he's not even. I mean, I don't know offhand personally people that like follow it no, that yeah. deep, you know. So I mean, it's hard. So it's hard to follow deep. Yeah. Where I'm at, so I like consult customers that run our our solution, and we have a miter framework, you know, set this up, but you right. can't. You can't just plug it in and say mm -hmm. you're not going to catch your threats. Like you got to have the right log sources of getting the right mm -hmm. data that will allow you yeah. to catch the crap that people are doing. All right, you can't say that your sim is going to cover this particular tactic because okay, it's going to cover the tactic if it's getting all the data. Right, Correct. and it's key types of data. Like the biggest advocate I push out is: Are you running Microsoft Sysmon? You know, like you need to know what processes are running on your system. And get hash level granularity of what's like what's happening. 
people call them PowerShell, what are they running when they actually call PowerShell? I don't want to know that someone ran it. I want to know what they said and yeah. what they tried to do. I mean, there's different types of sim. The one, you have to know your sim because there was, you know, fish to export. There's a lot of different things with that. And even if you're collecting all the logs, if you don't write the right query, the, yeah, log, the, the logs are garbage. Well, that's yeah, what I'm, that's what I'm dealing with now because... <laughs> Um, that's why you want something that's like put into meta or something like that so that you can easily link things together like log on log off with everything. Oh, absolutely. You know, Nick, one of the things I was thinking about in regards to the MITRE framework, to go back to that a bit, is it's overwhelming just to start with any framework and take it all in its whole. But to pick out the pieces that are the primary threat aspects for your organization and starting from there is, is the key. And that's really tough, because sometimes that changes on a daily really basis. Tough. To me, what sets MITRE different, like a lot of the frameworks out there are defensive in nature. Mm -hmm. MITRE is a threat hunting framework. Mm -hmm. It's there to help you find someone in your network who's doing something they shouldn't be, whereas from NIST to ISO. Which is much higher up on the three like Right, it's all about putting walls <coughs> up. It's not about finding someone that trips a wire. It's your defense in depth. It is. So MITRE, to me, should be part of that road to maturity. Like, I wouldn't recommend anyone to start taking on MITRE. I agree. If they haven't looked at, like, SANS Top 20 or, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say, so I would never want a company to say, hey, we're going to do MITRE for tech framework. It's our entire framework. Like, yeah. Well, you nobody's going to be able to. I'll like, say, how do you. Has anyone ever really finished the uh, the SANS or the CIS type? Top 20, right? Oh, no one's ever, like, yeah. ever mastered it. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. You're looking at past one. I just want to pass the average. But it's only 20. It's just it's 20. Yeah, then you look at the documentation. We never, we, no, we, we didn't pass it. We looked at it at work. No, we looked at it at work, and they're like, number one, like, asset management, like, failed. We're like, next. And the other thing I've heard was, well, that was the first one. And this is the easiest one. All the rest of them just get progressively harder. They were just like, oh, never mind. I think it's a reverse scan. It's, it's, it's harder than it gets I know, let's start at number 20. <laughs> <laughs> External pen test. Does any of you guys uh, uh, handle secure key management? Anybody have that as part of your active work? You mean like vault style stuff? SSH keys, yes. uh, public private Puppet. keys. Um, Puppet. Um, for us, we use Puppet for that. So the reason I ask is I had an idea that I was going to work on for a sort of a side coding project. I wanted to just run the idea by the group and see if you've heard of anything exactly like this. So I know for larger enterprise scale key management, there are, there are numerous tools that are on the market for that. You are but being the, recorded. It will be in the video. So okay. If you want it to be I don't know if it's. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, just. It, I'm going to put it on GitHub when I finish it. Okay, I mean, cool. It's, it's, it's Make like, sure it's safe. Just a side it. project. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Nah, this is like the, it's on no, Jitsi. No, no. I can edit it out of the video. <laughs> it's it's just <laughs> probably not even that great an idea. But what gave me the idea was working with um, people who are learning um, web application development, like for the very first time, time and time again. Uh, and I just worked with you one of these boot camps out at Clemson. Clemson. Right, they'll, they'll hard code their API keys in. Yes. I did that and in my project. Yeah, oh. even if it's yeah, like something, you know, NASA uh, astronomy picture of the day, right? It's a free yes. API key, just get it right online. It's not going to be anything, but it's still a bad practice for your very first website. Hey, we're going to hard code that key in there, and then immediately you're going to push it to GitHub. And then you, you just never think about how to handle that. And for somebody who's just getting started with, with development, Saying, oh, well, we're going to set up an environment variable and we're going to, you know, it's too much for them. It just makes our head explode. So I was thinking what I've done a bunch of times is just put it in another directory, create a path to it, right? And then I, it's outside of my Git repo and, you know, but I thought, well, I could actually make a, it would basically be a, a map yeah. that would just give sort of, not even a, not even a GUI, but it would be a command line tool, maybe written in Python that you could run and it would create uh, just a, a dictionary of, of your keys and, and it could even give you like how long you've had this key and you know so there is. what the key is for and it would be something that would be super simple uh, maybe even maybe some limited encryption maybe not so there There's, is something similar uh it, it's called hashicorp vault mm -hmm. yeah. hashicorp. Uh, hashicorp it's h-a-s-h-i mm -hmm. c-o-r-p Yep. So, just clicked on both. yeah, and there, there's a free tier, and of course, there is a enterprise tier. Mm -hmm. uh, the enterprise tier gives you that GUI that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The free tier gives you the command line. Now, it's 
it's got its perks. Um, you can get in there and you're the only one that can get into that vault. So mm -hmm. if I create a vault, Ben cannot get into there at all. Um, right, we said. Right. Um, where you might have something like, uh, was it CyberArk? CyberArk has a mm -hmm. passwordless vault solution like that, and then there's key vaults right. in mm -hmm. Azure, which yeah. operate the same way, which are... But you have to have a public-private key set up for your machine so that you... Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No. Yeah. No. So with uh, Azure, for instance, it's... Uh, application identity, you just the application and where it lives and who it is. Mm -hmm. And then it authenticates through Azure AD and Azure AD then reaches out to the key vault and pulls the key back and gives it back. Yep. Uh, so it can be any key, it's even secret anymore. But that, that's something that is actually managed on, on Azure, right? Yeah, it's managed, managed within Azure. And that, that's managed online, isn't it? Uh, well, it so, yes, so you could do it local. So th this is my idea: is it something that is just simpler than all of these things? Simpler, simple enough for a brand new person to pull a GitHub repo to something local. It would almost be like an npm package that they're running, and it would be npm create my key, and then you type in, okay, this is my NASA astronomy and the picture of the key, and you get your key and you put it there, and then it just gives you, uh, it, it just basically keeps out of your GitHub repo. Um, Anyway, my point is, you do it or not, I say yeah. do it. Yeah, I'm going to. Because even if there's other things, you could still hit somebody that's yeah, starting out. This is easy for me. It's a small business. And yeah. Nothing's like a stupid cool. idea. That, that's the thing for, for people that are learning to code. I'm not just, even thinking of it as, anyway. as a viable thing for, right. for developers because professional developers should be using a managed key infrastructure. Uh, absolutely. There should be something in place. Absolutely. But for, for students, especially who are just starting out and want something that is almost zero effort to get up. But it will keep them out of this hole. It'll fit somebody. You know, well, even like with Puppet, ideas. you can't truly like answer the concept, right? Like, exactly. Right. That's yeah. Not, yeah. Right. And, and making it easier on them to so, actually do it. As a as a graduate from Carolina Code School, recently, and having a, a Google API, which scares the hell out of me because I had to put my credit card yeah. on there. Yeah. You know, and going with my instructor, and she had we had to put go through the whole secret key and. Um, I still get, and there's a vulnerability update in my GitHub saying that, you know, my key is, you know, still vulnerable. And I'm like, well, how's it vulnerable? We moved it out. We did all these Did you push things. it to the repo at one point? At one point, I did. So it's still it there. It holds on to it. Okay. You, you, have to, yeah. you have to roll back to that commit. You have to delete that commit or, or change yeah. it at that commit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's, 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 it's just taking it out and pushing it again. It's that's only somewhere. push the dip. It's yeah. deep in the repo. Even yeah. if you revert it, it's still there. They, it's very hard to remove. Yeah, yeah Git's almost like an append-only database. Yep. Yep. They, you can remove stuff, but it's it's hard. You like, have to really want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The best thing if you accidentally commit keys is to rotate. Well, I'll just change. I'll just kill the keys. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 Just kill the keys. The key. point yeah. is, I'd be like, let me, let me design a new room. Yeah. Going through be like, wow, you go to Walmart, there's yeah. 30 rooms yeah. there. Yeah. So there's always going to be another new room. But it's a it's Different. a cheap room to build, yeah. and it's yeah. uh, an just do interesting it. idea. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or experience for you for the next stack, like to be even deeper. Yeah, because I mean, Ansible has its own vault. That's you on this. Papa doesn't do vaulting per se, but Ansible does vaulting. But Something like this. I mean, it's it's good, but I mean, there there are ways of doing it. it would, when you work with Python, you can do oh, a virtual yeah. env, and then you can put your, your oh, environment absolutely. variables in the environment. But even that, you ought to be I mean, doing. Your op, it's, it basically comes down to your offset. You, yeah. you need to know the steps you need to follow in order to reach the point where you can actually start the work of coding, exactly. whatever you need to do. Yeah. And 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 when somebody's just getting started, they don't want to hear anything. They don't want to hear They just want to start banging away some HTML. And get something online so I can see a website and write the cook here. It's fun. <laughs> and put my credit card number in there. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, it's like 4 a.m. and you right. save your work and you're just going to, like you're using it, push, yeah. get, push, <laughs> origin. Yeah. You should look also, if you're looking for inspiration, I know the way Rails does it is they actually store the credentials in the, the repo, but it's encrypted and there's a master key that's not stored in the repo. Oh, right. And the nice thing about that is, as the code moves through the different environments, as it goes to a staging environment mm -hmm. or a production environment, those you know if you needed to add a new service, it moves along with that. Mm -hmm. And so, or if you roll back code, um, you know it's uh, and so you can what you can do is for like developers, 
you know, that, that there's a like a environment specific master key. So for the development environment, you, you may have keys in there for developers to use, but then for production, you may limit who has access to that master key. So even though every developer actually has all the keys on their system, they can't. Yeah, of course, you're assuming the encryption yeah. uh, protects it, but. Uh, Unless the implementation's been What's bad. nice about it is it's really built into the framework. So mm -hmm. if I want to go edit my secrets, I have to type Rails uh, credentials colon edit on the command line. And it what it does is it uh, takes that master key, decrypts the, the YAML file, pops it up in the text editor. You go at, so you're editing it, it's like you're not even caring about the encryption. When you go save it, it re encrypts it, right. and does all that for you. So um, that's that cool. Just the so I did not specific to a framework, right. but, but uh, the concept I think could be carried over to anything. Yeah. It may be worth the kind of dissecting that a bit. Yeah, I'll take a before they it. added that feature, I used to do something similar where I used GPG and so I'd store the encrypted yeah. credentials. And, and GPG was a little nicer even because what you could do uh, with Rails, they, there's one master key, and so if you um, if, if you hand it to someone you don't want to have anymore, you have to rotate it. Uh, which is a little pain. GPG, what you can do is you can revoke. Yeah. Each person has their own uh, ability to decrypt it with their own um, public, uh, their own private key, and so then you could revoke uh, someone's access. So it's a little, it's more complicated. So I think that's why Rails went with the simpler shared mm -hmm. master key, and then they just pay you rotate it if you want to. Sounds like an interesting project, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What once we get to. Uh, the scoreboard, scoreboard, scoreboard first. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities less. <laughs> <laughs> Seven fifty. I know we're normally what eight o'clock. Yeah, eight. We tend to wrap up.